Hello, my name is Christine Freeman, and I'm going to be going over my 12th piece tonight for my art show, There's a Problem. Um, first, I want to show you what I've got here on the ground. This is my rabbit hole drawing. Um, hole spelled W-H-O-L-E. I know that Mindy Glintill has been doing ha having a rabbit hole CD. Um, this rabbit hole was spelled H-O-L-E for me as I experienced crazy nymphomania, enslaving sexual addictions, and self-harm urges. There was a crazy side of this smart sort of personalities, but I feel like I'm on the other side of it now. I am no longer the nymphomaniac that I was. I'm finding healing and hence the change of the spelling from hole to hole. I brought it this rabbit hole drawing because of the, the quote on it. I needed to read. It goes along with this book, Prophets Pray, which brings us to our 12th drawing. But first I'm going to read this quote. It's about Prophets Pray. is about... FLDS polygamy and the Mormon author who observed all that was wrong within it but others there are who of necessity and by force are driven to write history because they are concerned in the facts and so cannot excuse themselves from committing them to writing for the advantage of posterity nay there are not a few who are induced to draw their historical facts out of darkness into light and to produce them for the benefit of the public on account of the great importance of the facts themselves which they have been concerned. I love this quote because as I've been through all that I've been through, I also have a need to share my truth and I don't, I don't feel like I should have to apologize if the truth is a little bit uncomfortable for you. Doesn't, yes. I'm, this piece I'm calling Sweet Cousins. I'll talk about the sweet part first. Keep sweet. It's a cultural expectation within the FLDS church. It was just a cultural expectation, I should say. Warren Jeffs, the man we've got right here, he made it a commandment. That no matter what happens to his 12-year-old bride, she has to like it. They're not allowed to complain. They have to have a spirit. When I first learned about Keep Sweet, it seemed eerily familiar to me. In the Mormon church, there's this encouragement to be virtuous, lovely, praiseworthy, to seek after good things. If you listen to the women in general conference give their talks, they're very nauseating because you feel like you're a primary kid listening to them, brothers and sisters. I'm so grateful to be here today. Sorry, it got dark in the end, but I think sorry, it's okay. I think there was a reason for that. I think within this need to be lovely and happy always, there's something unhealthy about it. We're not allowed to be real, and we should be. Um, when we first moved here to Utah, People ask my mom, how do you do it with what happened to your daughter and your husband and your family? And, and she said, I think we're just going to try and have a positive attitude. That doesn't always cut it. You can't, you, that doesn't cut it at all. You can't just have a positive attitude about what happened to you when it's sexual abuse. You've got to acknowledge the damages, not just my mom, but everyone. I'm going to talk about just the cousin parts so this sweet cousin, more of the relation with the FLDS church and the Mormon one. Within the FLDS church, like this quote says, this man thought things were terribly wrong. I've seen this within the Mormon church too. We're not as extreme as they are now, but we kind of used to. I've got FLDS lyrics on here. They talk about how dangerous it is, how much his followers worship Warren when he does terrible things to their children, it doesn't matter, they turn a deaf ear. Mom and children are being hurt too and I wish that you could hear me. This is a quote from Brigham Young. 
when he's talking, when he, again, going back to positivity, he's giving a discourse on whining to his wives. But the first wife will say, it is hard, for I have lived with my husband for 20 years or 30 and have raised a family of children for him. And it is a great trial for me for him to have more women. His response, then it is time, I, then it is time I say you give him up to other women who will bear children. The celestial law would teach me to take young women that would bear children. So again, older women who aren't being financially supported always as well as they should be, who are having a hard time, they never with a husband, they never see, they say, this is hard for me, and his response is, stop whining. You can leave. He didn't offer insurance, he didn't offer support on how to support them. If you could not put up with a life that was hard, tough luck, try something else, I'm not going to help. There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with an attitude when polygamy was about young girls and, and bearing children maybe, but what about the women who are them? Anyways, I think, I think that's gonna be, that's gonna be it for my 12th piece. Sweet cousins, I call it. Thank you for watching.